Hello and welcome to this episode of Peak Life. I apologize for my voice, but look, we got important stuff to talk about today, so we're going to roll with it. I'm here to talk with Patty Strathman from the Sheriff's Office, and you work with the Vi Victim Witness uh, Support Program. I do. Patty, yeah. thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. This is, a, this is a really heavy topic, so tell me a little bit. There are, are different sections that we'll discuss. Okay. Tell me what the Victim Witness Support Program is for. So we assist crime victims and witnesses as they're navigating the court process. It's, um, it's often a foreign process for people that haven't been through it before. So we help navigate it in any way that, that they need. We, t we meet people where they are and um, you know, just help them through the process. So I imagine that the, the legal, the judicial process, super complicated. Yep. So I'm sure that's a big piece of it. But you know, what about that emotional piece, the trauma piece? Do you address that as well? We do. So, um, you know, we meet people when they um, have been victims of crime. We contact them, let them know our services are available. And then we let them know different agencies that are available to help them outside of the Victim Witness Program that can help them with counseling, support groups, um, you know, food closets, um, places that may be able to help with housing. Um, and then, you know, and then we'll go through the process of what to expect going through the court process. But we, a big piece of what we do is helping them to see that there are other community-based advocacy programs that can help as well. Okay. This it does not sound like an easy job. You've been doing it for a long time. What is it like for you to come in to these people's lives during what is probably one of the lowest part of their lives and to be able to help? Yeah, it's um, you're meeting people at a time when they um, have just been through an extremely traumatic event. You know, and we we assist people that have, um, you know misdemeanor assault charges all the way through rape, robbery, homicide. So, you know, you're meeting, like I said, you're meeting people where they are, but it's also extremely um, rewarding because the people that we're meeting are brave and strong and having to not only go through a traumatic event, but then have to navigate the criminal justice process on top of that. Or yeah. if they're a homicide survivor, having to deal with their grief and go through the criminal justice process. So it's extremely rewarding to, to be able to see such bravery and strength that, that people have that sometimes they don't even know they have until they need it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Now, I feel like we all kind of understand the need for support for victims through this process. What is it like for a witness? That must be a completely different feeling where, you know, you know you're not the victim, but you've, you've been witness to something really bad. How, how do they differ from the victims them, themselves, or do they? They do, um, but we, we provide pretty much the same services. Okay. Um, so, you know, if, if they have questions about the court process, we help navigate that. Um, and just like we would with a victim, like, you know, for instance, I have a case right now where there's a witness in a pretty bad case. We're going to bring her in. We'll show her the courtroom, let her meet the Commonwealth's attorney, um, you know, just explain what to expect when she comes in for the, the jury trial. So, a lot of the services are the same. What they're dealing with is, is often different than what the victim is exactly dealing with, but the services that we provide are, are often similar. Okay. Talk to me about this homicide survivor support group. So we started that. We actually, um, so it, that is funded through the Virginia Victim Assistance Network. It's funded differently than our program. Okay. Um, we contacted them, let them know that we had a need for it in our locality, in our area, actually, all of Hampton Roads. And thankfully, they took us on. Um, and it's a support group that meets once a month. We meet the first Wednesday of every month from 6.30 to 8 at the Chesapeake Sheriff's Office Administration Office. Um, and it's, it's an opportunity for people that have lost a loved one due to um, the hands of someone else. It's for them to get together and talk to other family members that are going through similar things than, that they are. And, um, we have a licensed clinician that comes in and, and does the support group. And it, I mean, it, I'm really proud that we started that. We actually started it right at the start of COVID. We, oh, wow. we got the funding and we were supposed to start in April of 2020. So mm -hmm. we kind of got you know sidetracked, but we were able to start it in July of 2020. And we've been in person for every meeting. You know, we took a lot of COVID precautions obviously in the beginning, but um, you know, we definitely see a need for it. We have a we have a good amount of people that participate in it, and the good thing about this too is it's not just for Chesapeake um, victims or survivors. It's for all of Hampton Roads. So if it's you know Norfolk, Suffolk, Virginia Beach, Portsmouth, um, they can come to the support group as well. Because this is this is pretty unique. This yeah. program, it sounds like. 
Yeah, we, we wanted something we've, for a long time, we've wanted something, you know, we meet these people and like I said, they're brave and they're strong, but we, it was a very helpless feeling to not have something that we could say, here's a way that we can help you outside of the criminal justice process. Yeah. So, you know, when we had the opportunity to, to get the funding through the Virginia um, Victim Assistance Network, it was, it, we were really, really happy and we're really proud of, of the support group, the sheriff's offices very supportive of it. They let us do it at their administration office and often help with, um, you know, letting me get some food to provide at the meetings. And wow. last year we gave all the participants, you know, a, a poinsettia at the holidays because that's such a difficult time just to let yeah. them know that we care and we, we don't ever want them to think that we will ever forget their loved one. So I imagine, you know, the, the legal process itself takes so long and, you know, yes. through the victim witness program, you guys are with them step by step, but this has got to be helpful for the long term, you know, looking out a year, two, three, four, hopefully if we can keep this going, I'm sure that when, when you are a homicide survivor or, you know, a, a witness or a loved one you've lost like that, that's got to stick with you forever. forever. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've heard p different family members say you're, you become a member of a club that you never wanted to join. Um, so it's like I said, it's an opportunity for them to talk to other people that are going through the same thing of them as them, because it's it's different than um, just normal grief. It's traumatic mm -hmm. grief. It's at the hands of someone else. Um, and navigating the criminal justice process and the, the enormity and difficulty of the criminal justice process on top of the grief, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's awful. So yeah. to be able to provide this to, to these family members is, is a, big, a big thing for us. And we're, we're, we're really happy we can do that. If somebody out there wants to help, do you use volunteers? Do you, do you accept help in any way? So for the victim witness program aspect, we do. Okay. Um, and we would love volunteers. They, you know, they have to go through a pretty extensive background check because mm. we're part of the sheriff's office. But we do love volunteers. We have, um, often have student interns as well. Our, our space is very limited. So since COVID, um, we haven't been able to do it as much. But now that things are, you know, kind of opening up again, we will be getting more volunteers and, and student interns. As far as the support group, um, we, don't tip, we don't really have volunteers come to that because everything in the support group is confidential with their clinician. I'm sure. not even in the meeting itself. Wow. I'm there to help get everybody settled and um, answer questions and, you know, here's the bathroom, you know, things like yeah. that. If they have to come out of the meeting, I'm there to help, you know, get, let them gather themselves and then so they can go back into the meeting, but I'm not even in the meeting itself. Okay. That's just with the clinician and the participants. Okay. So if anybody wants to help or if somebody needs these services, how can they do that? How can they get in touch with you? They can con our main number at the sheriff's at the victim witness program is 382-6417. Okay. Um, we have a website. If you go to the sheriff's office website, there is a victim witness tab with all of our contact information for everyone in our program. There's 10 of us, um, which, you know, we started the program, not me, but the program was started in 1984 as a one person program. Wow. And now today we're a 10 person program. So we've grown a lot. Um, so, but yeah, so all of our contact information is on the Sheriff's Office website as well. Great. Patty Strathman, thank you so much for all that you do. This is really an unseen um, need here in our community and beyond. So thank you so much for being here and sharing. Thank you. I appreciate it. That does it for this episode of Peak Life. Thanks for putting up with my voice. This was important information to talk about. We'll see you next time.